This video will address the question of palliating jaundice in patients with pancreatic cancer as well as periampillary tumors that is around the head of the pancreas. Now pancreatic cancer is a deadly condition, is a leading cause of cancer death. Only one in five patients will end up having life-saving surgery and approximately 50% 50 percent, 50 percent present with jaundice. Jaundice is a disabling symptom. Obstructive jaundice is, is associated with pruritus. Uh, this is the one symptom that the patients find very difficult to deal with. It wakes them up at night and it's almost uh, continuous when it does happen. There's loss of appetite, there's a metallic taste in the mouth and there's sleep disturbances associated with the About jaundice. the pruritus, uh, as I said, which is the most disturbing. So if there are no symptoms, then no, no treatment is required. If the symptoms are mild, then moisturizers, so-called emollients, can be used. Warm baths help too. If the symptoms are moderate, then bile acid sequestrants such as cholestyramine uh, is a medication that can be used because bile acids tend to get deposited in the skin and that is thought to be the cause of the mechanism for pruritus or itching. Uh, also, deoxycholic acid may help. If the above fail, then under medical supervision, further treatment such as uh, rifampicine, sertraline or phenobarbital may be used. So what are the invasive measures for relieving jaundice? And before I start, it's really important that patients who are candidates for radical surgery, for these patients, the team must consider proceeding straight to surgery rather than the relief of jaundice. It is because attempts at the relief of jaundice, whether they are done with endoscopy or radiology, these may cause infective or other complications which may either delay the time to surgery or in some instances patients may not be candidates for surgery at the end of it. If patients are not candidates for surgery or if jaundice relief is required uh, then let's look at what options we have and these include endoscopic, radiological and with surgery. So with endoscopy I will outline the principal complications and biopsy. Let's look at that. So this is the area uh, called the ampulla and any tumors in its vicinity can cause a stricturing of the bile duct. That can be tumors in the bile duct, the pancreas itself, the duodenum or the ampulla. Let's look at the anatomy here. The stomach is over here, the gullet here, the liver over here. The liver has the bile tube coming out of it and bringing bile down. Connected to it is the gallbladder. At the back of the stomach is the pancreas and this is the pancreas tube. Both of these tubes, the bile tube and the pancreatic, tu pancreatic tube are obstructed by the tumor. So now let's see how an endoscopy will help and how a stent is inserted. An endoscope essentially is a plastic tube that comes down the gullet um, and parks itself right at the bottom end of the bile tube. First thing that, uh, this, that the endoscopist would do is make that opening into the bile tube bigger by putting, uh, pulling a knife out and just cutting gently so that that opening, this is called a sphincterotomy. And once that opening is made bigger, the endoscopist then ins tries to cannulate the bile tube itself uh, and inserts um, a dye or a contrast, takes extra pictures to see, to look at the bile tube as well as the area of the stricturing. And this is then followed by insertion of a guide wire which goes up the bile tube like that. Uh, and then he threads a stent. The stents are either metal or plastic. Metal stents are preferred because they, these are more durable and associated with less instances of infection or cholangitis. The plastic tubes are cheaper but need to be changed and have a higher risk of infection. Hence for malignancy the metal stents are to be preferred wherever possible. Endoscopists may use a brush as shown on the top right of the picture over here to wiggle it about at the site of the stricture and gain cells. A biopsy is only possible if the tumor is protruding through the ampulla and a biopsy can then be taken directly. Let's assume a metal stent is inserted uh, with the top end inside the bile tube and the other dangling down into the small bowel. And what it does is that it gives a passage to the bile to flow through and relieve jaundice. The complications associated with this, and these are bleeding, perforation and pancreatitis. Here's a sh picture showing endoscope which has been in inserted into the patient and it is parked itself right at the bottom, of the bottom end of the bile tube. A stent has been inserted that you can see and this contrast material in the bile tube itself. This picture shows a radi radiological insertion of the stent and you can see the stricture in the bile tube with a stent inserted within it. If endoscopic access is not possible for whatever reason, a radiologist can attempt to put a stent into the bile tube from the side using ultrasound and x-ray guidance. Um, 
by infiltrating the liver and then gaining access to one of the bowel tubes and inserting a, a guide wire down across the stricture and into the small bowel and then on top of that a plastic or a metal stent uh, can be threaded which again dangles in the bowel tube and the other end is outside into the small bowel. The complications of this pr procedure may include uh, liver hematoma, liver bleeding, a bile leak or leak uh, around the liver itself. Surgical bypass is uh, less commonly utilized and as the name suggests, a loop of the small bowel is brought up. Uh, the bowel tube is either divided or transected. In this instance, I will assume that the bowel tube has been divided and a new join is made between a small bowel and the bile tube um, so that the bile can now flow down the bile, the, down the bile tube then into the small bowel, thus bypassing this part where the stricture exists. And this is a permanent solution, but it requires an operation. It can be done either as an open operation or as minimally invasive. The relief of jaundice may not be required for surgical candidates wherever possible because complications may delay surgery. Uh, anyone presenting with jaundice ought to be educated about simple measures to relieve jaundice. And relief of jaundice does improve the quality of life quite significantly. Endoscopic metal stent insertion is the preferred route wherever possible if relief of jaundice is required and radiological or surgical bypass is less commonly utilized, but that is a team decision. An attempt at a biopsy ought to be made at the time when stents are being inserted. This ends this brief video. I hope you've found this of use. If you have any comments, please do share.